One of the most important aspects of an apparel item or home product is dimensional stability to laundering. There may be no worse attribute than a shirt or slack that shrinks and no longer fits properly. Excessive dimensional instability affects appearance, fit, size, and serviceability. Dimensional stability is defined as the resistance to change in the length and width dimensions of a fabric or garment. Dimensional change is the measurement of the change in length and width of a product. The change is usually expressed as a percentage of the initial dimension of the specimen. The dimensional change can either be a growth, which is an increase of the length or width dimensions of a specimen. The more common dimensional change is that of shrinkage, which is the decreasing of the length or width of a specimen. Any method for measuring the dimensional stability of fabrics and garments must have four basic steps. These include a preparation step, where the specimens are properly prepared, a testing sequence, which washes the products with agitation under controlled conditions, followed by drying, an evaluation process for measuring the dimensional change, and a data recording process. Two of the most adapted test methods used around the world are AATCC Test Method 135, which is titled Dimensional Changes of Fabrics After Home Laundering, and AATCC Test Method 150, which is titled Dimensional Changes of Garments After Home Laundering. These procedures are used to predict dimensional changes that occur after home machine washing and drying. In these methods, a home laundering machine is used to wet out the fabric and applies agitation without tension. Wetting out of the fabric without tension allows for initial dimensional changes. However, complete shrinking or growth of the fabric or garment will only occur when drying with mechanical action takes place in the tumble dryer. For complete and reliable shrinkage results, it's recommended to wash and tumble dry at least three cycles, but preferably five cycles. Almost all evaluations of dimensional stability executed by the industry make use of some version of these tests. The materials and equipment needed for these tests include the following. An automated washing machine, an automated tumble drying machine, standard laundry detergent, ballast cloth and weighing balance or scale, an indelible ink marking pen, a 15-inch by 15-inch template cutting guide, a ruler or a measuring system that yields direct shrinkage numbers. The dimensional changes of fabric specimens subject to home laundering care are measured using benchmarks applied to the fabrics prior to laundering. Typically, a manual system is used with several pairs of benchmarks. Also available today is an automated scanning system for determining the dimensional change. Dimensional change can be in the form of shrinkage or growth. Place the 15 inch by 15 inch square template on the fabric. Align the template's straight edges parallel to the selvages or width edges of the fabric and to the top and bottom edges of the sample. Make sure that the edges of the template are more than 10% from the edges of the sample's dimensions. Mark the outside edges of the template. Mark each specimen with three sets of length benchmarks and three sets of width benchmarks using a ruler, a stamp, or other suitable device. Make sure the ink used is indelible to laundering. Normally, 10-inch benchmarks are used as they make the mathematics easier to calculate. Some tests call for larger benchmarks which require the specimen to be larger than 15 inches square. Label each specimen with proper identification so it's always read in the length direction. The identification can be a combination of numbers, letters, and symbols. Carefully cut out the specimens to prevent distortion. If woven fabrics are to be tested, use a serge sewing machine to bind the edges of the specimen. Knitted fabrics do not need to be overedged. The washing and drying machines in the testing step don't have to be located in a standard conditions laboratory due to the heat and humidity generated in laundering. Each sample's identification should be entered into a logbook in the laundry. The information should include the ID number, the number of specimens, washing and drying conditions, the cycle instructions, the type of detergent to be used, and any special instructions. 
The test load size should consist of test specimens and enough ballast pieces to make a 4.0 pound dry weight load. Woven and knitted specimens should be washed separately from each other. Exceptions would be in the washing of garments that contain panels of both woven and knitted fabrics. The controls should be adjusted to the test specifications. Set the water temperature control to the appropriate setting for the wash and rinse temperatures. Check the wash temperature with a dip thermometer. Temperature control systems are available that are very effective in controlling the washing temperature. Fill the washer to the water level setting required, which is normally the medium setting. This setting will achieve an 18.0 gallon level. Set the washer for a 12-minute normal cycle. Add the required amount of standard detergent. Allow sufficient time for the detergent to mix with the water. Next, add the weighed sample load and close the lid. At the end of the wash cycle, transfer the washed sample load into a dryer. Any loose or tangled thread should be cut off at this time. Next, clean the lint filter. Set the dryer for the timed dry cycle at the 30-minute setting. It may be necessary for some heavy fabrics to tumble dry for a longer period. One of the most important steps in measuring dimensional change is that of specimen handling following drying. Knitted and woven fabrics should be handled differently. Remove knitted specimens from the dryer after the final drying cycle and place flat on a conditioning rack shelf. Remember, knitted fabrics are easily distorted. If knits are hung prior to measuring dimensional change, they may elongate in length, thereby falsifying the data. Remove woven specimens from the dryer after the final drying cycle and hang on the clotheslines of a portable cart. The length direction of each specimen should be vertical on the cart. Allow four hours of conditioning before measuring the benchmarks for dimensional change. The next step is the evaluation or measurement of the change in dimensions. Each specimen must have its benchmarks measured. In knit constructions, the length is the whale direction and the width is the course direction. In woven constructions, the length is called the warp and the width is called the filling. Record the distances as a percentage dimensional change and enter onto a tally sheet or into a spreadsheet. A digital imaging system may be used as a measuring device for dimensional change in place of the prescribed manual measurement devices if it's established that the imaging system's accuracy is equivalent to the manual devices. SDL Atlas has developed a digital imaging system, QuickView, to automatically measure the dimensional change for fabrics. This system uses a scanning camera to locate the benchmarks prior to laundering. After laundering, the specimens are placed back onto the viewing table of the imaging system for dimensional change calculation. After sampling and before laundering, each specimen with benchmarks is placed onto a viewing table for initializing the imaging system. The benchmarks might not be the exact distance apart. However, this isn't important since the dimensional change will be based on the actual distances before and after laundering. This specimen's data shows actual benchmark averages prior to laundering of 9.94 inches length and 9.96 inches width. After laundering and conditioning, each specimen is again properly located on the viewing table and the plexiglass cover is lowered. The imaging system approximately locates the benchmarks. The operator then clicks onto the actual benchmarks. Once this is completed, a mouse click sets in motion the immediate calculation of dimensional change. In this example, the blue knit fabric has actually shrunk 13.0% in length and 0.2% in width. Fabrics are normally tested for manufacturing purposes and for textile home products. Garments are tested to determine their wash and wear properties as well as their potential fit. Depending on the garment type, measurements for dimensional stability are clearly defined in the test methods.
Dimensional stability for garments is covered in AATCC Test Method 150, Dimensional Changes of Garments After Home Laundering, and is designed for accurate analysis of the dimensional stability of garments. In the test, the garments are washed in prescribed load sizes, water temperature, detergents, and other criteria particular to garments. After laundering, the garments are either tumble dried, line dried, drip dried, or dried flat on a screen. The procedures for drying are very similar to those for drying fabrics. After drying, the garments are hung vertically, being careful not to stretch the garment in the length or the width. The next step is the evaluation or measurement of the change in dimensions. Each specimen must have its benchmarks measured. In knit constructions, the length is the vertical direction of the garment and is the whale direction. The width is the horizontal direction and the course direction. In woven constructions, the length is called the warp and the width is called the filling. Record the distances or a percentage dimensional change and enter onto a tally sheet or into a spreadsheet. The final step in the process is to report the change in dimensions. The values should be reported as an average percent dimensional change. The fractions shown in this example are converted and rounded to the nearest 0.1% for each fabric direction. As mentioned, garments are evaluated for shrinkage with a slightly modified test format. With garments, the determination of dimensional change is based on the location of benchmarks. This is important because garment construction, sewing threads, sewing tensions, and trim may affect the fabric and garment dimensions. Therefore, predetermined and agreed-upon benchmark locations are used. These are covered in detail in AATCC Test Method 150. Knit shirts are evaluated for shrinkage by using benchmarks and, in some cases, with shrinkage squares. In the basic method, a knit shirt is laid on a table and all folds and wrinkles are carefully spread out on the table with the front of the shirt facing up. For shrinkage measurements, the shirt is marked and measured at several locations before laundering, and the same marks are measured after laundering. The benchmark for length shrinkage is determined by measuring from where the collar is sewn into the shirt at the junction of the shoulder seam. A mark is made at this point, and a tape measure is stretched from this point directly down to the bottom edge of the waist hem. A mark is made at this point, and the length is recorded to the tenth of an inch. Multiple and alternate positions may also be marked for the front and the back. The width is measured on the front of the garment just under the armholes. A mark is made one inch below the point where the sleeves are sewn into the garment. The width is measured in tenths of an inch from one side of the garment to the other. The sleeves are also measured for the length, starting at the top of the sleeve where it attaches into the shoulder assembly and moving down to the edge of the sleeve. The width of the sleeve is measured across the bottom of the hemmed edge. If the length of the garment allows for it, 15-inch benchmarks may be placed on the front or the back of the shirt starting above the hem and just below the neck. If the size of the shirt prohibits a 15-inch mark, then a 10-inch mark can be used. In a like manner, if the width allows for 15-inch benchmarks, then they can be placed at several locations on the front and the back of the shirt. After laundering and conditioning, the shirts are again laid on a table and the same benchmarks are measured again. In order to determine the shrinkage, the length of the washed condition for each measurement site is subtracted from the original length. This difference is divided by the original length and the result is multiplied by 100 to give the percentage. For example, if the original length is 24 inches for the shoulder at the neck insertion to the bottom of the shirt and the washed length is 23, then the amount of shrinkage would be 24 minus 23 divided by 24 and the total is multiplied by 100 to give a value of 4.2% length shrinkage. Length dimensional change is also measured from the bottom of the placket to the hem mark. In the width direction, the benchmarks from just under the arms are measured and recorded. Then the hem is measured and the calculations for dimensional change are made. Slacks or pants are measured in a different manner. 
The most common method is to get a length value for measuring the change in the inseam length. The width shrinkage is determined by measuring the waistband. For the length, the pants are spread on the table without distorting the garment. A mark is made at the top of the inseam where the pant leg joins the crotch. The length is measured from this point down to the bottom of the inseam. The waistband is measured for width by carefully spreading the waistband to eliminate folds. A tape measure is placed at one edge and spread across the waistband until it comes around to the other edge. Again, the width is recorded. Here, a pair of laundered pants is compared to a pair before laundering. The right edges of the pants are held even and the amount of shrinkage of the waist is clearly seen on the left side. After laundering, all the benchmarks are measured again and the shrinkage values are calculated with the same method as used with the shirts. Here, the inseam is measured and the length is recorded. From this data and the original inseam length, the length dimensional change is calculated. As a result of measuring, if the final measurement is smaller than the original measurement, this results in a negative dimensional change, which is shrinkage. A final measurement larger than the original measurement results in a positive dimensional change, which is growth. In this example, the original inseam length was 32 inches and the length after laundering measures 31.5 inches. This calculates to a length shrinkage of 1.56%.